I spoke at the National Firewood, was that what it was called back then? Okay. Oh, marketing, marketing. Okay, so I spoke at the Firewood Workshop two years ago in West Virginia. Um, and this is a presentation that last night I tweaked in the hotel room a little bit. Um, but this is similar to the one that I used two years ago. And not much has changed for our firewood marketing since then. Some has. Um, I'll give you guys a Cliff Notes version about me. My name is Brian Madden. I own a company called Madden Brothers. We're out of Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I did start processing firewood with a single splitter when I was eight years old um, in my parents' backyard. My parents have used firewood to heat their home since the 70s. Um, when I was a little kid, my parents would not allow my brother and I to ride the then three-wheelers until we split a quart of firewood. So Sunday mor Saturday mornings, we'd wake up, go split a quart of firewood, stack it up, and then it was three-wheeler time. So I guess that was my start in the firewood business. Um, this is literally me with our old John Deere tractor, which we still have today, stacking up. It looks like a third of a quart of firewood in my parents, and that's my brother there on the right. I think that we can all make really good money in the firewood business. Um, Jonathan was showing us earlier how, what your price is per quart of firewood and um, how much, you know, $650 for a straight truck and there's seven quart on there and you pay your guys 15 bucks an hour. And I deal with all of that on a daily basis in our firewood business. The problem for me was that at our peak, we were a thousand quart a year firewood supplier. We sell all of our firewood retail. We, we don't wholesale a single stick of firewood. Wholesale to us would be someone that orders three quart of firewood, like that's a wholesale customer. But we don't sell the garden centers, greenhouses, landscape contractors, they're not for us. Um, but the problem for me with it was when we were a thousand quart supplier, I was constantly working on costs, right? So how do you get your costs down? How do I pay my guys less money? How do I get it to cost me less money for my guys to process that firewood? Do I buy them new equipment, make it more efficient? You know, how, how do I stop touching the firewood so much? And I felt like I was spending all of my time trying to take my cost from $200 a cord, in Jonathan's example, down to zero, right? But the most that it could make me was what it would save me. So if I'm at 200 bucks a cord cost, then th the lowest I could go is zero, right? Where you really make money in firewood, where I really make money in firewood, is m my brother works on getting, keeping our costs under control and getting our numbers to go down. But I work on getting our numbers to go up. And when I say our numbers to go up, I don't mean selling more firewood at a discounted price. Um, when we sold 1,000 quart of firewood, we were at 195 bucks a cord. We are not at $195 a quart right now. In fact, we're not even at $195 for a third of a quart of firewood. So the volume of firewood that we sell has gone down substantially, but the profits that we make off of the firewood that we sell are significant profits. Um, a while back, I thought about leaving our company, and my brother suggested that instead of leaving the company because I was getting tired of constantly worrying about you know, that still chainsaw that just got run over by the guy in the skid steer today and who didn't show up for work. And um, yeah, those just aren't parts of the business that I enjoy. But I truly enjoy marketing. I love it. I love sales and marketing. Um, so my brother said, as opposed to leaving the company, and one of the plans was that I was going to start a marketing consulting company, um, he said, why don't you stay here and do marketing for us? So I did. That was five years ago. Um, I have completely changed the way that we do marketing and now, and Harry, Harry was pushing for this to happen today, but I have four kids and 30 employees and there's just not enough time in the day. I um, wrote an ebook two years ago, um, Marketing for Firewood Profits, and now I'm turning the ebook into um, a paperback book. It's going to be sold on Amazon. And it's not terribly long, I mean, maybe 100 pages, um, 120, but it goes over all of the things that I do in the firewood business for us to make money. And, and I'm going to try and touch on as many of those as I can while we're here today. So um, this is how we started firewood marketing, and we still do today. 
Um, I still do, I don't do billboards anymore, and yellow pages are, gosh, I don't even know if they print those things. Yellow pages is like Google now, right? Um, we do street signs. I've gotten away from Craigslist, but I love postcards. I do home mailers. Um, this is like entry-level marketing, right? But we still use it, and I think it's important. I'll mention one thing. It says um, Craigslist on here. Craigslist caters to a certain type of buyer, and that's not the type of buyer that I want to sell to. It's okay if that's who you want to sell to. Um, but when someone is looking for a Rolls Royce or a Lamborghini, they don't look on Craigslist for a Rolls Royce or a Lamborghini, right? Who's on Craigslist? The guy that wants the $500 beater just to get him through the winter. Well, that's the same thing in the firewood business. So you go on Craigslist and you see these guys that are advertising. Well, you guys have seen them. I, mean, come, I think I have a picture of some of them. I, I, we have stuff like this going on, which is fine, but these are the guys that we're, that we're all competing against. This guy doesn't even sell his firewood by the cord. He's selling it by the truckload or the, the rack, and their prices are just so inexpensive. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what works, what Craig's, how Craigslist works for me. Um, I troll Craigslist for guys to buy firewood from. So I buy firewood that will meet our spec because we are absolutely anal about the quality of firewood that we sell. That is, that's one thing that we just won't, um, we, we don't sacrifice at all in our quality. So if they can meet our spec, we literally buy firewood from guys all day long, every day, for $120 to $150 a cord delivered to us that we then repurpose and sell to our customers and, and make real profits off of. Um, maybe like some of you in the past, the way that we used to handle our firewood marketing, advertising, we would wait until the first frost or you get the first snow and then the phones start ringing and you're like, oh my gosh! Well, I forgot to send out the thank you cards. I forgot to send out the, the postcards. We're going to have fire with this year. We didn't make any phone calls. So since that time, which is like this, this is literally like our firewood marketing, um, we're a little bit more calculated with the way we do things now. We're like this. Um, so for us, the Internet has been huge for changing our firewood business. We use Facebook um, and Google pay-per-click ads like crazy. I'll go into a little bit more on tracking those things here in a minute, but um, these are actual ads for our company and where they're at. Um, this is I Love Marketing. I mean, everybody, even if you, even if you don't have, if you have a flip phone, you still heard of I Love Mar or yeah, um, I Heart Radio. So we're in um, weather. This is huge. We were able to set some um, parameters with weather.com where our firewoods Firewood ads show when it's only 40 degrees or colder. If it's 40 degrees or warmer, our ads aren't showing. Um, the cool thing about this is when, let's see if I could figure out this pointer. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, the cool thing about this firewood ad is that if, so, so we're not getting charged for it to be there, right? We're only getting charged if somebody clicks on it now. What you pay per click depends on the market that you're in. In our market, it's saturated with firewood suppliers. Guys have learned from me that they need to be online. So that has raised the cost per click. You know, five years ago, I was paying 25 to 50 cents a click. I just checked this morning. Um, we have six compost facilities and we sell a fair amount of mulch and compost. And right now this morning, I'm paying $2.97 per click for the word mulch in Cleveland. That's a lot of money to be paying for someone to just click on. They're not buying from me. They're just clicking on that ad. Go ahead. I realize you may not have the answer to this, but isn't that just insulting your competition from clicking on your ad? No, okay. not at all. Nope. So um, you click on that ad, you go to one of our actual landing pages, right? The landing page for us is target specific. It doesn't take you to our website where you look at mulch and compost and the about us. You're going right to our page and you're looking at firewood. You saw the ad about firewood, we're taking you to the firewood page. Um, our customers can all order firewood online. They schedule their deliveries online. So we, we've automated our process quite a bit. Um, yes, absolutely. Yep. So your wood is paid for before any of yours. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're in business for, right? The money. Um, okay, let me back up here for just a minute. So this one is in uh, USA Today. So this would actually be, I don't know if you guys look at USA Today on your mobile phone. This will actually show up in your feed on your phone also. Um, but it's, it's target specific. It's not like you're going to see my firewood ad here in uh, Maryland. I mean, it's only in, a, you know, I geographically target these areas. So that's huge for us. Um, Facebook is absolutely amazing. I never thought in my wildest dreams that Facebook would be good for firewood marketing. We crush it with Facebook ads. Facebook ads allow you to target customers based off of everything. Like if they were engaged in the past three weeks and they have a cat with a pink collar, I can target market to, I mean, it's really, Facebook, the, their target marketing is so specific. Um, it allows us to target to, you know, specifically homeowners, not renters or apartment complexes, uh, people of a certain age, income. Um, it, it's absolutely amazing for us. But what I do want to show you, let me skip forward. Uh, well, about all of these things, I think the one thing that is so extremely important, this is an example of a report that I just did. It's so important for you guys. If you guys are going to start marketing, you have got to track your numbers, right? Um, I talked about this this morning. Some people get so stuck on their phone number, and they just think, oh, my gosh, I have the greatest phone number. It's like 976-WOOD, and everybody's going to remember 976-WOOD. Next year when they need wood, they're going to call me because they're going to know my phone number. You have to get rid of that mentality. People don't remember your phone number. They just don't. It's that simple. When they want something, they're on their mobile phone, they're asking Siri, they're going to Google, they're going on Bing, they're searching for firewood, and that's it. And it's whoever shows up first, they're calling, right? So the reason I say tracking, we have about 40 different phone numbers that we own. On, if you're starting to firewood, if you're starting to market, you don't have to go out and buy this stuff, and it's so simple. I can't tell you guys how easy this stuff really is, right? Um, sign up for a free Google Voice phone number. Literally, it's free. Get a local 10-digit phone number with your area code. I think toll-free numbers scare people. When I see them in a local area, I'm like, a toll-free phone number in Cleveland for mulch? It seems kind of weird. So sign up for a toll-free phone number, right? You don't have to have a fancy high-tech phone system. We do, but our business supports that. You sign up for a Google phone number, and then you have it forward to your cell phone, right? So when it forwards to your cell phone, you can have it show up on your cell phone as your own 10-digit Google phone number. So in your cell phone, program the name of the ad that you put that phone number in. Every single ad that I run has a different phone number. So if I'm running um, a Valpac ad, I have a tracking phone number in there. If I run a newspaper ad, tracking phone number. Business cards, chat, every single thing that I put out has a tracking phone number on it. So in your phone, you would put Valpac and store that phone number under Valpac. Now when your cell phone rings, right, you go to answer the phone, you see it says Valpac, you know that that person got your name and phone number from Valpac. You have to track where your calls are coming from. It drives me crazy when I see people do all of this marketing. They're in everything. They're online. They're in the yellow pages. They're in Valpac. And they're advertising their bright, beautiful phone number. And then when you ask them, which ad, which ad converts the best for you, they don't know. Go ahead. Um, every door direct through U.S. Postal Service. I, I shouldn't say it converts the best. Um, it is the least costly conversion. I'll give you an example. This is Google for me right now. And when you guys hear this number and you think about the number that um, Jonathan just talked about. Okay, so last week, literally April 11th through April 17th, this is our Google report. Um, because of Google, we had 77 phone calls come into our office. Of those 77 phone calls, we converted if you were to count these dots, and this is literally me with my pen, I think there were 19 orders that converted. So we convert 25% of the phone calls from, in that week, I convert 25% of those phone calls into orders, right? I'm anal with numbers. I know that percentage. Next week, if my conversions go from 25% to 20%, I'm talking to every member of my staff that answers the phones, and I want to know why they're not closing sales. 
We're very professional, we're very respectful, but I run my number, I run my business based off of my numbers. This isn't some hypothetical theory, it's based on numbers. So I closed 19 sales. Google charged me $637 last week for my ads. Of that $637 that I paid for ads, I did $4,996 in sales. Here's the crazy thing. If you divide the number of sales that I got, 19, 17, whatever it was, into that $600, Google was costing me like $34 per customer. That's what I paid for that customer. So if you're selling firewood and you're only selling it for $200 a cord and you're paying Google $33 per customer, I hope that you're selling that firewood, those customers, uh, by the stick of wood and not by the cord of wood so that you can make some real money. Um, so I'm anal about tracking things. I think that you guys need to be too. It's not overly complicated. It's extremely simple. Um, I wouldn't put a single ad out there if you weren't tracking it. I'm going to go back here for just a minute. Brian, are you using a particular customer relationship manager software? Or I am. Yeah, I absolutely crush it too. And I don't use like a MailChimp or... Um, an eye contact. Um, I use an online marketer software. It's called Infusionsoft. It costs me $300 a month just for my CRM. But my CRM is integrated into my phone system. And today when I hop in my truck, I'll get an automated email from my phone system and I'll know how many calls came in today from which advertisements. I'll know how many leads we closed. Um, I get an order delivery report emailed to me every three hours. But, but our company is large enough. I don't have a big firewood business, okay? I, I, I don't. Um, I sell 250 cord of firewood a year, but I sell 250 cord of firewood a year and I make real money off of my firewood. So let me tell you how, let me give you some of the, like the golden nuggets of how I make a lot of money per cord of firewood. Um, when somebody does call into our office, and this doesn't ha again, you guys don't need the Infusionsoft software like we use. You could just use Google Voice or use another company. And if you guys want to know this information, afterwards, the next couple of days, email me, call me. I, I would love to share this information. I use a service called Call Loop, right? Call Loop, you get a phone number for a buck a month. I mean, it's a dollar. If you can't afford it, I'll give you the dollar to try it for a month, okay? Here's the cool thing about Call Loop and, and Google Voice. When somebody calls that phone number, even if you are John's tree service and you're up in the tree, and you answer your phone, you're like, yeah, I'm up in the tree, I gotta call you back. The cool thing about those services is they capture that customer's caller ID, their information, right? So you can go into Google Voice at the end of the day when you're done, when you climb out of the tree, and you pull up a report. And when I say pull up a report, like this is very simple, it's like email, right? Like it's like in today's inbox, click, and it shows you a list of all of the people that called you today if their caller ID isn't restricted, restricted, it will give you their name and their phone number, right? Why is that good? Well, every single person that calls your firewood ad is interested in what? Firewood. firewood. Oh my gosh. Imagine if you save every single person's name and phone number that has called you for the past three years about firewood, whether they bought it from you or not. Just imagine if you save that, right? Guess who saved that? Me, me, I did. And guess what I do with it? I call those customers. I call them every single year. And I say, hey, this is Brian from Madden Brothers. A couple, a few years ago, you called us and you were interested in our firewood. Hey, listen, I've got a $25 coupon that I'd like to send to you. What is your email address? And Boom, I get an email address from them, and email addresses are like gold because a lot of my follow-up is based off of email. We, we crush it in, I bet you our company, not in Firewood, in, in just total sales. I've done a single email campaign to retail customers for mulch that has done $30,000 in a week just from an email. But it's not salesy. Like if you guys go on, um, I have a website, it's called thefirewoodmarketer.com. If you go on the Firewood Marketer, nothing that we do or that I do is, it's salesy. It's all about the customer. It's not about 
It's not about me or it's about them, right? Um, so you had asked before, like, what's one of the most popular things? This is like 1980s stuff here, right? Like, I I'm in the future here, baby. I don't know. This is like Infusionsoft and automated call dialers and reports getting emailed to my phone. But what makes me money is the U.S. Postal Service. And let me explain to you how. Every single year, we have these 8.5 by 11 flyers, right? Again, the flyer is all about the customers. It's not about me, right? In fact, our company name is not even on our flyers, just a phone number. So we have a flyer about firewood. We have these flyers printed. Don't use Office Max or Staples. They'll rip your face off. Find a local printer. It'll be dirt cheap. Order 5,000 of them. We're paying three cents a piece for them, so 150 bucks. So you have 5,000 of these things printed. Make them double-sided. I mean, you have two sides of a piece of paper. Use it to advertise on both sides. Um, if you get on the USPS website, you can apply for a retail in Daisha. They make it sound complicated. It's easy. Everybody can get one. My 12-year-old son could have one if he wanted it. So you get this retail in Daisha. Then you guys pick the neighborhoods that you want to advertise to, right? So you literally pull up a map. And then as soon as you start hovering your mouse over this map, the streets light up in blue. Well, these streets that are lighting up, they're carrier routes for the Postal Service. And all you do is click on the carrier route, and it adds it to the list that you want to market to, right? So the U.S. Postal Service will only allow you to send out 5,000 of these per day per post office. But if you go there and you're real nice, like, you know, like in the old days when people would say please and thank you and shake their hand and look them in the eye, if you do that at the post office, most of the time you can drop off your order on Monday for the next five days, right? And they'll, they'll know to just send them out. So pick, a pick the neighborhoods that you want. Pick 5,000 people, right? The cool thing about this service is the, post, the, the uh, mailman's got it in his like, truck next to him. And he's going through the mail, making the deliveries. When he's on your street, he grabs your flyer and he puts it on the top of the mail stack, right? And he puts it in the mailbox. Here's the neat thing. Do you know how much money it would cost you guys to mail an 8.5 by 11 full sheet, um, you know, hard, ca cardboard stock paper in the mail? It would probably be like a buck, right? Maybe a buck 50. If you do the USPS EDD program, it's 15 cents, right? So you're getting in the hands. I, I love technology. I do. I love it on your phone. I love it on the computer. Send me emails. I love that stuff. But my mom and dad, they love paper. Like, bring the paper on, right? And people get this, and they look at it, and they hold it, and it feels nice, and it looks authentic, and they keep it. And they call your phone number. And when they do, you've got their name and their phone number. So the EDD program is huge for us. We use it a ton. Um, let's see what else. Okay, this is, part of, um, this is part of, like, our email sequences and how we increase the cost for firewood. Um, change the size of the quantities of firewood that you sell. That was the first thing that we did that changed the, our profits for the better. We used to sell our firewood by the full cord. By the full cord only, that was it. Now, you couldn't buy a full cord from us. If you want to buy a full cord, it's great. You know how we put it on our invoice? We sell it to you as two half cords, and we charge you the two half cord price. You don't get discounts. We don't give discounts. If you call up and you ask us, you tell us, you're all excited because you're a three-cord buyer. You're going to be disappointed when you tell us that and we tell you, you know what, we really appreciate you calling us, but we're not your supplier. Like, call the guy that's 120 bucks a cord because we're not. Um, we have taken our firewood from full cord to half cord. We now sell half cord, third cord. Two years ago, we ordered the quarter cord. We're crushing the quarter cords. People love quarter cords. $177 for a quarter cord of firewood. Yeah. Do you deliver that as well? Absolutely. Delivery separate. The only city that we deliver free to is a city that we live in, a city that our business is in. Outside of that, it's based off of mileage. We charge $2.50 per mile, per one-way mile, and that's how our delivery fees are calculated. So s take your quantities, split them up. It's no different. You know, you go to, um, you need ketchup, right? And you go to Costco. You go to Costco and you buy ketchup, you buy like a five-gallon jug of it, right? And you're paying... I don't know, 10 cents an ounce for ketchup at Costco. 
And then it's Thanksgiving. I don't know why you would need ketchup on Thanksgiving, but look, just go with me here. Thanksgiving, you need ketchup. Costco's closed. You go up to the local gas station to buy ketchup. And amen, they're open. They have it. You, you don't care how much it is, right? There, you're spending like $1.50 an ounce for ketchup, right? So do the same thing with your firewood. Don't sell if this is your market. If you guys are wholesale firewood suppliers, that's great. It's going to be harder for you to take your prices from where they're at to, to triple them. In the retail business, it's easier to do that. And the first thing to do is to break up your quantities. The second thing that we did, we started offering kiln-dried firewood. We charge almost twice as much money for our kiln-dried firewood as we do our air-dried firewood. We were the first ones in Ohio to offer kiln-dried firewood delivered in bulk. People had heard of kiln-dried, they've used kiln-dried because they bought it at the gas station or Home Depot, but they were never able to order it in a dump truck load, and we started supplying that market. Um, initially, we were buying our kiln-dried firewood from Ernie Gish in Philadelphia. Ernie couldn't supply us because he was, he, he was selling more wood than what he produced. So, um, and as you might imagine, to send a semi from Cleveland to Philadelphia and back to haul 12 quart of firewood was outrageously expensive. In addition, and I think Mr. Gish was very fair, but the price that we were paying per cord for that wood was very expensive. And that's why initially our price was literally double. So um, we got smart with that two years ago when Mr. Gish couldn't supply us with kiln-dried firewood. Um, I got the big idea to reach out to pallet companies who kiln-dry their pallets. And I said, hey, do you guys ever have idle time in your kilns? And they said, yes, we do. And I said, how can I buy it from you? So I negotiated with the pallet company in our area. They now kiln-dry our firewood for us. I pay $65 a cord to have firewood kiln-dried. So um, we don't sell enough firewood to make the investment in a kiln. Um, we talked to Kiln Direct, Neils, uh, this past last summer. And um, financially, it just doesn't make sense for us. Go ahead. Okay, so at first, that, that was like a conundrum for us. It really was. We didn't know how we were going to do it. Um, we are in the mulch business. That's our core mulch and compost. And we color mulch. So when you color mulch, we buy our colorant in totes. It's a 250-gallon bladder in a steel cage on a pallet, right? We pop, IBCs. We pop the tops off, pull the totes out. We use those cages. If you guys want to do something like this, I, would, I wound up buying a few totes myself because we didn't have enough. But the first thing that I would recommend doing is call the mulch companies that are in your area. Because three years ago when I didn't do this, I didn't know what in the hell to do with my totes. And I was taking them to the landfill and paying to get rid of them. So it would, be, it would behoove of you to place those phone calls. You could probably get those totes for free. I would have gladly given them away three years ago, just so I didn't have to pay to get rid of them, and you came to get them? Oh my gosh, it'd be great. So we used the IBCs the, without the bladders in them. Um, this past year, we made an investment. It was very inexpensive. Um, we bought an enclosed trailer, literally like a $2,000 enclosed trailer, because we were shuttling. We have a couple low boy trailers because of the equipment that we run. So we were double stacking pallets on a low boy trailer. You'd have to shrink wrap them because the wood was falling out. Then you have to strap them down like it was like a circus, like, like Ringling, Barnum, and Bailey. It was Madden Brothers and Bailey coming to town with the circus act. So we spent two grand on this um, old trailer, enclosed box van, and now it's like, oh my gosh, it's like revolutionized our firewood business. We're a small 53-footer. We bought a brand new pallet jack. We thought we were high tech. It was like 200 bucks for the pallet jack. Now we take those, we load them up on the trailer, you know, shuttle them to the front. We do not double stack them. We only single stack them. Um, the amazing thing about that for us is, one, it was hard to educate the pallet company who was kiln drying our firewood that once they kiln dry the firewood in December and we're getting six inches of snow, don't put them outside. And they did. And like at midnight, I would find myself flying up there when the snowstorm's coming to put tarps on it. I mean, it was crazy. The circus, right? So we bought the trailer. We now put, I have no idea, eight cord on the floor. And now it's its own protector from the elements, right? 
So now we take the trailer up to them. They pull them out as they need them. They put them right back in our own trailer. They call us when it's done. We pick it up, bring it back. It sits in our parking lot. This year we're having a big firewood ad put on the side of it. Um, so that was, has been huge. A couple other ways that we increase. Uh, our goal is to increase the sale on every single firewood order that comes in our door, right? So the first way that we do that is to try and sell them kiln-dried versus air-dried firewood. That's the first step. The second step, um, Dale Alexander, who's here from Alexander Manufacturing, just met him today for the first time. Gr great guy. He's a great guy. His company is amazing. For the past several years, we have been offering firewood racks to our customers as an upsell. So when they order a half quarter of firewood, we say, you know, gee, Mrs. Smith, where are you going to stack that firewood rack at? Would you like our guys to bring out one of our real nice racks and install it for you? And we might be buying racks for 70 bucks, and we're selling them to Mrs. Smith for 230 So we mark those up quite a bit, and you'd be surprised how many customers buy them. Okay, so that's number one. Now, here's the problem. We have so many things that we upsell our customers that you can't kill them on the phone, right? Like, hey, Mrs. Smith, yeah, thanks for calling Madden Brothers. Do you want that air-dried or kiln-dried? Do you want a firewood rack or not? Do you want us to stack it or not? Are we delivering it or are you picking it up? Have you had your chimney sweeped in the past two years? Like, right? So, email. Email, right? We hit our customers with one upsell on the phone. And right now, that upsell is the firewood rack, right? Over the next three days, via email, they get upsold on stacking. Stacking firewood sucks. I hate it, right? We have so many different things that we do at our company, but when my brother says to me, hey, chief, I need you to come in on Saturday and help stack some wood, I am like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. But we make serious money off of stacking firewood. Right now, our half cord half cord charge to stack firewood is 85 bucks, right? So two days after you place your order with us, Mrs. Smith gets an email and says, hey, Mrs. Smith. Oh, it's so goofy. Cheese, right? I'm telling you, it's not all about you and your business and your cool phone number or your fancy new logo. It's about them. Notice these are emails that are going out from me. Like they're not like some fancy email template. They don't have my company name or logo or any of that because I want customers to feel that it's like us, like me, Mrs. Smith, we got this, right? So I send this email out. You have no idea how goofy I felt recording this video, right? Like, hey, Mrs. Smith. Okay, it doesn't say Mrs. Smith because I don't customize all of them. But it says, hey, this is Brian from Madden Brothers. Thanks for ordering firewood from us. My gosh, I am so concerned about your chimney. When is the last time you've had your chimney inspected? I really worry about that. I have four beautiful kids myself. I have my chimney inspected every single year. So I literally send this email out in a video. Customers click on it. I know how many customers click on it. I know how many customers buy because of it. And let me tell you this. This is crazy. Upsells, right? I pay $79 for a chimney sweep from a Joe's Chimney Sweep. How do I find him? I Google them. He was good enough to have a single-page website. What's on his website? A picture of his van and him with the the brush, right? All dirty. Awesome. 79 bucks he's advertising on there. That's it. I call him up. I tell him who I am, blah, blah, blah. I don't even have the nerve to ask him for a discount if I send him all of my chimney sweeps. I just said, 79 bucks is great. Thanks, Joe. You're awesome. I then went to like the National Chimney Sweep Firewood website, and I saw that they have this 21-point chimney inspection that you should do uh, when you're having your chimney swept. Well, Joe, maybe Joe does that. I don't know. It doesn't say on his website, but I take all of this and I put it all together and, you know, make it look really nice on my website, right? And on my website, you can order to have your chimney swept and I send out Google ads. I have Google ads displaying for chimney sweeping. I send them to that page. I subcontract my chimney sweeps to Joe for 79 bucks. I charge $235 a chimney. Last year, I did 77 chimneys. So I know that's not like a ton of money, but uh, 77, I make 150. I made $11,000 last year just off of sending out an email and asking customers, would you like your chimney cleaned, right? Give them, go ahead. I give them the, I, I sell them on the fact that when we come out to clean their chimney, we do this 21 point inspection. I meet with Joe, hey Joe, we gotta go have coffee. I wanna send you some business, let's talk, Joe. Here's a 21-point inspection, brother. 
I need you to do this inspection. Do you understand how important this is? If I find out you're not doing the inspection, I'm calling every one of, your, every one of my customers after you do it. If I find out you're not doing the 21-point inspection, I'm finding them the next guy. It's just that easy, right? And we do. Hey, Mrs. Smith, thanks for uh, placing your order with us. How was the chimney sweep? Joe's a great guy, isn't he? We don't, even, we don't even hide the fact. If you call us on the phone and ask us, hey, do you, is it you performing the chimney sweeps or do you subcontract it? We don't lie. We're honest as the day is long. We tell them that we subcontract that service. Maybe Mrs. Smith will hang up and find Joe. If not, she hires us. It's great. But we call and we follow up on those services. So chimney sweeps, huge. Firewood racks, absolutely amazing. Um, stacking firewood has been terrific. You know, for each quantity of firewood that we stack, we, we charge a different rate per cord and, you know, add it in there. For Joe's firewood, have you ever had any concerns with Joe doing it one year for you and then going in there the next year sort of thing and doing it himself and charging him less? Yeah, absolutely. Well, do I worry about that? No. Oh, my gosh. I have four kids. I, I worry about college educations and who is my daughter texting. I mean, like... I'm not worrying about Joe because really and truly, I am so, like, so simple, right? I don't have a contract with Joe. I'm not going to waste the money with an attorney coming up with it, right? Because if I meet with Joe and I shake his hand and we have a gentleman's agreement on a handshake and he breaks that agreement, in my eyes, it's easy. If I find out from Joe that he calls Mrs. Smith next year to try and get her chimney, you know what? Joe just lost 77 chimneys a year. So I hope he thinks that that one chimney, I hope that he can get eight grand from Mrs. Smith because he's not getting it from Mr. Madden. It's just that easy. And that's, those are the relationships that we have with all of our vendors. They're just, you know, you just have to be honest, be fair. Is it staffing? Is it your staff doing the staffing? Yes, it is. Yep. So um, even my regular full-time staff, we have 30 full-time guys, they would prefer not to stack firewood. Um, so I talk to a lot of the high school guys, and on a Saturday, bring high school guys in and pay them by the hour to stack firewood, and you know, it just seems to go right along. They're, they're bonding. We'll even promote that to the community, like, hey, yeah, we use the local, fire, we use the local Brunswick High School football team, and they're going to stack your wood, and, right? And, and people love that sense of community, and, and then we don't have to do it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm getting short on time. Emails, love them. Um, every door direct, we went over that. We call all of our customers thank you cards every single Tuesday at our company. We send thank you cards, handwritten thank you cards. We handwrite the card. Hey, Mrs. Smith, Brian from Adam Brothers, just a quick note to say I appreciate you placing your trust in us. Thanks again, Brian. That's it. There's not a flyer, there's not a coupon, there's not a business card, there's Nothing. It's handwritten from me to her. They're not all from me to them. But our staff, every Tuesday, we handwrite business, or handwrite thank you cards, handwrite the envelope, put a real stamp on it, send it out. People like that stuff. In the month of May, we'll send out 400 of those every Tuesday. Like it's because we're a retail mulch business, we do a ton of retail deliveries, but we still like to say thank you to our customers. In order to put a lot of the online stuff together that that I do um, it's hard to do everything yourself I believe in delegating and delegating the people who are better at that task than what you are yourself my Google pay-per-click campaign that I run for my firewood business and my mulch business this is gonna surprise you um, I pay a thousand dollars a month to one man who lives in Pittsburgh to manage my Google pay-per-click right um, you can buy a firewood processor for $1,000 a month, and I'm paying that for someone to manage my PPC campaigns. I hold Art accountable. Art is right here. Um, I hold Art accountable, and he does a good job. I check his records every single day. With technology, these things are easy. What I'm getting at is in order to accomplish everything that I do online, emails, Infusionsoft, the phone systems, getting all of this stuff to work and talk together, um, I have about 17 virtual assistants that I use. I have two virtual assistants. Um, I have a guy that works as my personal assistant. His name is Luis. He lives in Managua, Nicaragua. He answers phones for me. He returns emails for me. He, he's a great guy, um, absolutely amazing. But the internet has allowed us to do things like that where before we couldn't. Okay, quickly, operational changes. Raise your prices, change your product sizes, pre-sell your customers. 
We start making literally telephone calls and emails in July to our customers about selling them firewood for the upcoming season. Um, if you guys do not have a website, you know that commercial I've ever seen it on TV? Um, it's called Jet.com, and the people's heads explode and the purple smoke comes out of their heads. If you guys don't have a website, a single page website, the only thing I could say is, like, you have to get it. Like, you can have a website for free. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to have pop ups. It doesn't have to have email opt ins, newsletters, videos, nothing. For right now, just get a website up and tell people. Use your first website page as a business card, right? Get your name and your phone number up there so that you could start to get organic search results through Google. It's huge. It really does work. Um, I already mentioned the chimney sweeping, the stacking, and the firewood racks. We did the kiln drying thing. Start tracking everything. I'm telling you, get tracking phone numbers. You, you have to get them to find out what works and what doesn't. Um, Google pay-per-click sounds complicated. It is. I pay somebody to do it for me. But if you'd see my Google pay-per-click campaign, it's pretty big. You can do a Google pay-per-click campaign yourself just by Googling, how do I set up a Google pay-per-click campaign? It works phenomenal for us. If you're spending money on it, you're going to track it. If you put a tracking phone number in it and you set your own ad to run this weekend for Firewood and your cell phone rings and it says Google because you set up an ad to ring to this phone number that you've never had before and somebody online found you, I bet you the first time that phone rings and you see it says Google, you are going to be like, hot damn. That kid from Cleveland wasn't so bad. He's a fast talker, but he really knows his shit. Okay. Um, Start thinking about neighborhoods that you want to market. I have to tell you a colossal failure on my part. Found this beautiful neighborhood. I drive by it every day. I thought, this neighborhood, I'm going to retire from this neighborhood by selling them firewood. I sent out the EDD flyer to them and waited for the phone to ring. Did not get a single phone call and thought, what in the world did I do? My brother is all over me about this. I drove to the development just to drive around to see what now happened. And the first thing I noticed was that all of the chimneys, they had like the gas <laughs> thing on the outside. These were big, beautiful half million dollar houses that didn't have wood burning fireplaces. So if you're gonna market, market to customers that use your product, right? Um, the EDD program is huge, okay. Harry, this is my two minute pitch. Two minutes? Okay. Um, I spoke two years ago. I didn't have anything to offer. For three months after I spoke, I talked to people on the phone. I talked to them via email. Everybody wanted information. How do you do this? How do you do that? What about this? I couldn't figure out that. Can you point me in the right direction? Could you log into my Facebook account? That's cool. I love to help people, right? But there is only one way that you're going to impact your, the profits of your firewood business. And it's not to sit around and ponder the idea. It's to get off your butt and take action. Do one simple thing. So if you're not into taking action because you're too busy processing firewood, sourcing material, handling employees, working your full-time job, I get it. It's okay. I, this time... I'm going to offer that beginning in June, I'm going to take five people and I'm going to work with them over the next 12 months and their firewood business. And everything that I talked about here, I'm going to do with them in their firewood business. You want me to call pallet companies to find someone to kill and dry your wood for you? Done. I'm on it. You want me to handle your Google PPC? I will put Art, my $1,000 a month guy on it. We're going to give you our work. We're going to set up your campaign. Facebook. We'll talk about what it is you want me to help you with, but I really and truly believe that as opposed to me just telling you guys this stuff and then you coming back to me and saying, hey, Brian, this didn't work, or you know, could you tell me about that again? You know what, guys, really and truly, the most valuable thing that we all have is our time. And I have four beautiful kids at home that I want to spend time with. I answered the same questions two years ago 87 times and nobody did anything. 
I know one way that I take action on stuff. It's when I have skin in the game. So if you're interested, I think I'll probably be on the list, the email list or some, something. Um, I might even send out an email to do a little marketing. Um, but I am offering up that I'm going to do this for five people this year. If you have interest, just reach out to me. That would be great. That's it. Thank you.